Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to answer the question from a client, what is swag? Meaning, on a hinge, what is swag? What does that term mean? Well, what it means is it's the bend on the hinge leaf. It's the way that the hinge leaf is bent so that it ultimately determines the type of hinge. Hinge swag is the relationship to the bend on the hinge leaf in relationship or, in, or compared to the vertical axis of pivoting of the hinge itself. Where those leaves are in relationship to the center line of the barrel is what hinge swag is. And I happen to have a Baldwin 1040 hinge on my desk that I'm doing a video on. And I can just easily point out to you that the swag on the hinge leaf is the bend, and it's right here at the tip of my finger. That bend. The hinge, the center line of the hinge leaf, does not go down through the center line of the hinge barrel at all. It can't because this is a full mortise hinge. But at the same time, it's not flush with the bottom of the barrel because it has a swag on it. When the hinge swag is as such that you see here, if you were to lay it on top of your desk, it wouldn't sit flat. When it's like this, it's a full mortise hinge. That means that the bend on the hinge leaf, when these leaves are brought parallel to each other, they're going to have a small margin between them. It would be a matter of measuring the distance from the center line of the hinge in this relationship to the top of the hinge plate, and there being an offset is what that swag really is. And as I said, swag is where that hinge leaf is bent to, and it's just simply this. The swag on the hinge leaf determines the type of hinge. It's the bend on the, on the hinge. That's all it is. So this hinge is a full mortise hinge, which means it has a particular type of swag to it. The center line of the leaf uh, is offset from the center line of the barrel so that when the leaves are brought together, and that offset is about 30 thousandths of an inch, something in that range. Maybe it's 50 thousandths, whatever it is. When they're brought parallel, those leaves are, when the leaves are brought parallel, there's an inherent gap between the two. And if we measured that gap and divided it by two, that would indeed be the offset from the face of the leaf to the face of the center line of the hinge. I said earlier that you could lay this on your desktop and it won't sit flat. That's because the hinge leaves are swagged. If they weren't swagged, meaning no bend at all, and they were completely flat or flush with the bottom of the barrel, you could lay that on your desktop and it would sit fl uh, completely flat. That would be a full surface hinge. You wouldn't want to use a full mortise hinge that has bends on the leaf like this because it won't sit flat onto the surface. So that's what swag is. The, as you change the hinge swag, everything about the hinge relationship in terms of how it's mounted or the type that it's classified as literally changes. So hopefully that answers the question. If it doesn't, please ask another. If you want to know information, let's go to part two of this video. To further define hinge swag and to see its different uh, applications where it shows up, I did have this Baldwin 1040 hinge. Let's click on the template and see if there's any information on the template that will reveal anything to us. Uh, it does, in fact. It does an excellent job uh, at revealing additional information. So this is the swag. This is how it's bent. There is a difference which they don't define for us between that center line and the face of the leaf. When you take that dimension and double it, it's the gap between the two hinges, which is seen here. Okay, There needs to be a little gap between the two hinge leaves when the door is closed. Otherwise, the door won't close. It'll be hinge bound, which is, by the way, why they bevel doors to relieve the potential for hinge binding or, 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 or a door that's hinge bound, meaning when you push the door closed, this area is making contact with the rabbit and going to spring the door back out. So that's why uh, doors will be beveled on the hinge side. Many older carpenters, not old, many old timers, so let's just put it that way, they don't think that you bevel uh, the hinge side. And their experience tells them that they don't and that you only bevel the lock side. I get that, but if you're going to bevel, just bevel both sides. So this full mortise hinge, and that's the key portion of this, this full mortise hinge is swagged because it's being installed as a full mortise. If you didn't have hinge swag, in your mind's eye, imagine this hinge where the leaves were flush with the bottom of the hinge. That would make the dashed dimension line to the surface of the hinge greater than it is, which would mean that this margin here would be substantially greater. 
So you can see how a hinge without swag would not work for a full mortise application. But it would work for a full surface application. And you'll notice if you look at full surface hinges, they do not have any hinge swag. So that Baldwin template is ha uh, very handy. Let's look at another example. All types of hinges will have hinge swag. This is what's called an olive knuckle hinges, hinge. This, this hinge is most definitely from the 19th century, if not earlier. I would think the design of an olive knuckle hinge goes back several centuries. But as we look at the template for that um, olive knuckle hinge, which I've sold, I've machined doors for, uh, they're very interesting hinges. They uh, kind of act as a wide throw hinge because the, um, because the hinge has a particular uh, dimension between inherently between the hinge leaves that a normal hinge doesn't have. What I'm driving at is the measurement from here to here and the location of the screw holes is substantially greater than a standard full mortise hinge, even though this hinge is full mortise, a butt hinge, uh, we'll call it. Um, it can inherently act as a swing clear because it leaves you the potential for a lot of distance between where the hinge is mortised, depending on where the door is and where the, um, you know, where the frame would be, you know. You can inherently have, uh, you know, an inch and three quarter. But here's what I'm driving at. That vertical axis of pivoting, that offset is a 30, is 31 thousandths or basically a 32nd of an inch. Well, when you bring those leaves parallel, it'll be a 16th of an inch. And that's the swag. It, we think of it as this angle or this bend right here. It's really the relationship from here to the face of that hinge leaf. Now, a tremendous resource to move this to conclusion. The link below this, uh, well, in our site, look for the word manufacturers. And when you find that, click on it and then do a find function on your keyboard for the name Stanley. There will be several results for Stanley because Stanley has several divisions. Look for Stanley hardware. And then we're looking for a 2010 architectural hardware catalog. That's the one that I currently use because it has all the data in it uh, where I know to find it. <laughs> so uh, do a find function again on your keyboard for SWAG, and you're going to find in the first section of this catalog, the which is for the Stanley uh, catalog, which is why I use it, an encyclopedic approach to hinges, and they talk about all aspects of hinges. Well, we're looking for swag. Swag is a slight offset of the hinge leaf at the barrel, which permits the leaves to come closer together when parallel. Translation, if it wasn't swagged, they wouldn't come close to being uh, close to each other when they're, when they're parallel. Hinges are slightly less in width when both leaves are not swagged. Uh, okay, sure, because the hinge will be actually wider if you use the same length components without swagging them. Because when you swag them, you use up a little bit of their usable length, a, a very tiny amount. Not swagged leaf is shorter when only one leaf is swagged, exception specify leaves must be equal. Okay, so that refers to, that is a super deep dive on the world of hinges. Um, when you have a specialty hinge, and, I, and in fact, earlier this week, I sent an order into Stanley for raised barrel hinges. And with a raised barrel hinge, you have to know if the leaves are equal and you have to know if the door is beveled or square edge because the way that they cut the metal and bend the material together is dependent on the requirements because we were replacing existing. That's a super deep dive. No one is ever going to really encounter needing to understand swagging at that level. But be aware that swagging is a far deeper important concept than just the bend on the hinge leaf. Uh, when leaves are parallel, standard swagging for most architectural hinges provides a sixteenth of an inch clearance, which comes back to that 31 thousandths. So this times two is a sixteenth, is what they're driving at. Okay. Now, hinge not swagged, both leaves swagged. Full mortise, full surface. Standard hinge. You can have specialty applications. This is inherently a raised barrel hinge. Now, a raised barrel hinge has a much more aggressive bend. Actually, both leaves are actually bent, or I've seen them actually bent. Um, but a raised barrel hinge is used when you have a deep inset uh, where you can't have the barrel uh, encroach into the rabbit of the frame itself. So the short version of this is that swag determines the type of hinge it is. Let's wrap up this video on camera.
I hope this definition of hinge swag has not been overly wordy or unnecessarily complex. It's just the bend on the bend on the hinge leaf. That's how it was. Nor that that's how it was originally um, defined to me. And only when you dig deeper into the concept, look at catalogs like Stanley to name those that I think are good catalogs for definitions of everything hinge related. Certainly Stanley, a company called PBB. Um, Papa Bravo Bravo. They have a really great introduction in their section as well. Most manufacturers really do. Uh, McKinney has a decent one. Bomber does a really great job. Um, and if you want to know more about hinges, I would certainly start with the approach of learning the different types of hinges, full surface, full mortise, um, half surface, uh, half mortise, then the different types, slip in, wide throw, path, uh, energy transfer, raised barrel, um, um, swing clear and how you need to define each of all of the components necessary in the field to dictate the type of hinge that you need and swag plays a indivisible role in determining all of those hinges um, absolutely swag is as important as any other dimensional concept uh, regarding the hinge any questions on hinge swag or any other uh, component concept as it relates to hinges please feel free to reach out to us and thank you Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.